Dear AWE aspirant, welcome to ACE Online. This is Dr. G. Baladaju. On behalf of Mechanical Engineering Department, I would like to present the weightage analysis of today's exam. So, this is the exam bar So, when you choose question paper, 150 questions, 120 questions are easy. Calculator is not easy, but 120 questions are comfortable. To end of hours, you can easy all questions. You can attempt five, ten questions. You can check the checklist. You can engineering mechanics. Five questions are easy. Five questions. Next, strength of metals 23 straightforward questions. Calculator is not Direct question is not answer. Next, theory of machines and vibrations. Here also easy. So, five questions are easy and comfortable to answer. Machine design out of 12. 12 straightforward questions. Without calculator, you can manage. Fluid mechanics is very important. I tell you, fluid mechanics is a very important subject. I think it's very easy to ask questions. If you are fluid mechanics prepared, you will have a good scoring. 20 questions, 21 questions, one or two questions, the remaining questions are straightforward. You will answer. Heat transfer 14. Actually, we have experts who have 6, 7, 8 questions. 14 questions are very easy questions. Next, engineering materials, okay, two questions are tough, remaining three questions are easy. IM and O are like a disappointed, only four questions we had. And that too, just in time manufacturing, what came out the latest trend run content, just in time manufacturing, we had two questions each other. One time uh, related to job shop production, one time uh, linear programming. When CPM and paid to inventory control, I have any questions. Production engineering, 31 questions, low, okay, two, three questions, we calculate the number, remaining in the easy. Output. Thermal engineering, 30 questions, 5 questions is tough, 25 questions. So, total 150 questions, you have 120, 125 questions, it's very easy to ask. I think it's 100 questions. I think it's 100 questions, 100, 110 questions, and 200 marks. And the paper analysis is all about it. My question is feedback, students' feedback. There are many people who are doing 100, 120, 115, 120. So, if you are doing 120, 130, you are happy. You are in a safe place. So, coming to my subject, I am and war. So, as I mentioned, there are four questions. First question is just-in-time manufacturing. You have a concept of just-in-time manufacturing. There is no inventory. There is no inventory. Set-up time is low. Inventory is small and small and large size. So, you can answer that in the base case. Just-in-time manufacturing is most effective in low-value manufacturing. Low-value manufacturing is the key word. It's compulsory one. It's A one compulsory. High-value manufacturing is wrong. It's B and A wrong. If B is wrong, obviously, we have to give B options. So, if we have to give B options, we have to give B options. So, High value manufacturing and thesis kuna one kuna. Option B delete jes se. Manak answer ime putu nante four option thesis hachu manam. Fourth option thesis hachu. Repetitive manufacturing and it kaadu. Just in time manufacturing and it repetitive ande. Adi malli mass production ikun kosu nante. So answer C gude kaadu. Ante manam three gude thesis dham. So C leth ga baati nak obvious game ite nante anni help hai nai put. Only ukate ho man. Megil point. Ente nante adi E and D. So answer hoche si low value manufacturing thora the innovative manufacturing. So answer hoche option one. So easy. And the only just elimination criteria follow in one matter. Next question. Which of the following are characteristics of just-in-time manufacturing? Same just-in-time manufacturing is not the same. Low inventory carrying cost. Generally, the inventory is not the same. The inventory cost is not the same. So, E is correct. Reduce the need for inspection. We have no stock aim, but inspection is not the same. So, B is not the correct. So, A is correct, B is correct. Presence of large stock inventory. That's not inventory, just in time. Large stock is not. So, C is not wrong. If C is wrong, obvious change is to delete C. So, C is not wrong, delete C. Now, if you look at the option 2, option 3, option 1, option 2, option 3, option 4. The answer is 4. Next question. Low inventory carrying cost, reduce need for inspection. What are the characteristics of a job shop production? I know that the job shop production is less value and there is a reputation for non-repetitive jobs. So, I know that different product types are produced. So, E is correct. 
next to very large quantities are produced manam varieties ekkunnapudu large quantities undam anamata so idi wrong single type of product is produced single type ante mass avutadu so idi kuda wrong ante bc this is and last came untadandi a correct d correct a d correct ekkada unnai ante 2 so option 2 anamata meeku idi direct ga simple question job shop production anedi next question linear programming linear programming ante general objective function undali constraints undali non negativity restrictions untai ante first quadrant you cheyali the model must have an objective function idi correct the model must have structural constraints correct the model must have non negativity constraint x1 x2 non negative anukuntam kada adu ante 1 undali 2 undali 4 undali ipudu adu em adutunnadu ante must have all the following except annadu except ante edu undagoddu ante idu anamata the third one answer vachesi third option okay so next term uh, fluid mechanics let us start the questions from the subject of fluid mechanics and machinery the first question is stator in a turbine is used for the purpose of stator is to redirect the flow so straight away option 1 over here one one please straight away option 1 is correct there is no need to read anything else because one itself is correct the purpose is to redirect the flow moving further <coughs> in a horizontal pipe of diameter d and length l carrying oil whose friction factor is f if the acceleration due to gravity is given by g and the fluid velocity is v meter per second then the head loss due to friction is given by this is basic darcy equation we have darcy equation given by flv square by 2gd if he says friction coefficient then 4 flv square by 2gd now since he has mentioned friction factor we will look for flv square by 2gd which happens to be option 4 the answer to this question is fourth option next question the discharge in meter cube per second for laminar flow through a pipe of diameter 0.04 meter having a center line maximum velocity as 1.5 meter per second is equal to how much if you look at the options the answers are given in terms of fractions so it is better if we write our numbers also in fractions now you see he is given maximum velocity is 1.5 meter per second you should recall that the average velocity is supposed to be equal to half of maximum velocity in the case of laminar flow through pipes which implies it is equal to 3 by 2 whole by 2 that is equal to 3 by 4 furthermore diameter is given as diameter is given as 0.04 meter that is equal to 4 by 100 now we know that discharge is equal to how much it is equal to pi by 4 d square into average velocity that is equal to pi by 4 v d square is 4 by 100 times 4 by 100 times average velocity is equal to 3 by 4 this 4 this 4 and this 4 this 4 cancel off we are having 3 pi divided by 1 followed by 4 zeros 3 pi 1 followed by 4 zeros option 4 answer to this question is option 4 moving further next question very fundamental question floating body can have stable equilibrium if you recall stable equilibrium implies metacentric height is positive that means m is above g the criteria is metacenter should be above g 
Look at the options. Meta center point coincides. No. Meta center point is above center of gravity. Perfect. Answer is supposed to be option two. Still, if you want to read further, it is a waste of time, but still let us do it. Metacentric, meta center point is parallel to center of gravity. Wrong. Meta center point is below center of gravity. Perfectly wrong. Okay. Moving further. Next question. The resultant upward pressure. Now you see, resultant pressure could also mean the word force. Please don't confuse yourself that force and pressure are different. Accept it, they are different. Accept it, they are different. But uh, resultant pressure could mean force also. The resultant pressure of a fluid on an immersed body due to its tendency to uplift the submerged body is called as. Very fundamental thing. It is scoring level answer. It is buoyancy, Archimedes principle. Next thing. A Borden tube can be used to measure. Borden tube is something which is used by mechanics also for measuring pressure in your tires. Answer is option three over here. Next question. In laminar flow through a round tube, the discharge varies according to. What is the equation of discharge in laminar flow? Laminar flow discharge is equal to pi by eight mu minus dp by dx multiplied to r power four. Now if you see, if you see over here, it is inversely proportional to viscosity. Answer is option one. Now look at the other things. Inversely proportional to pressure drop? No, it is directly proportional to pressure drop. Linearly to viscosity? That is wrong. Inversely proportional to viscosity. It is proportional to the cube of diameter? No, it is proportional to the cube of, sorry, fourth power of diameter. So answer over here is option one. Answer to this question is option one. Next question. Match the following. In match the following, it is always good to take elimination technique. If you see pressure, what is used for measuring pressure? A3. Pressure is used by using a pressure is measured by using a manometer. Now A3 is correct. Three options are having A anything apart from three. Straight away, answer is option four. If you are still spending some time on this question, again you are wasting time. Okay. If you still want to see velocity is used, velocity is measured using frontal tube or pitot static tube. Flow rate is by venturi meter. Temperature is by thermocouple. The key should be three, four, one. 3, 4, 1, sorry, 3, 4, 2, 1, right, 3, 4, 2, 1, correct. Next thing, the correct dimension for surface tension is, now recall surface tension has two definitions, it is surface energy per unit area or you can say force per unit length. Energy per area would give you joule per meter square, force per length would give you newton per meter. Look for any one of these things, you are having newton meter, wrong, joule per meter, wrong, joule per meter square, correct, answer is supposed to be option. Next question. For a two-dimensional flow, now this question, probably they have done a printing mistake over here. They were supposed to write for a two-dimensional irrotational flow. Now they have mentioned two-dimensional flow. A two-dimensional flow can be anything. It can be rotational, irrotational, steady, unsteady, compressible, income. anything is possible. For which vorticity again could be anything. It could be zero, non-zero, positive, anything again is positive, possible. So therefore, for this question, I cannot give you any answer because there is no answer. If they would say the two-dimensional irrotational flow, fine, answer would be zero. But still, this answer is not correct for the given question. Moving further. A streamline and equipotential line. Now regarding streamline and equipotential line, the first thing we should click in your mind is they are orthogonal to each other except at stagnation point and the grid formed is known as flow net. Now let us see. They are identical, perfectly wrong. Intersect at acute angle, no. Perpendicular to each other, correct. Parallel to each other, wrong. Answer is option. These are very fundamental statement questions now. Moving further, working principle of hydraulic lift is, now if you recall hydraulic lift or uh, hydraulic press or Brahma's press was discussed in Pascal's law. It is a Pascal's machine which is based on the principle of Pascal's law. Answer is supposed to be option four. Which of the following is a wrong assumption in Bernoulli equation? Now recall Bernoulli equation. Bernoulli equation has come from Euler's equation. Euler's equation was having an assumption that we are neglecting the viscous forces. So therefore, when you talk about Bernoulli equation, you are supposed to neglect the viscous forces. Now he's saying, which of the following is a wrong assumption in Bernoulli equation? Incompressible flow, correct. Irrotational flow, correct. Steady flow, correct. We are expecting the flow to be inviscid. So therefore, the answer over here is viscous flow. Viscous flow is wrong for Bernoulli equation. That's the reason why we go for head loss, inclusion of head loss whenever flow becomes viscous. Next question. The region between separation of a streamline and boundary layer surface of a solid body is known as. Now if you recall in boundary layer separation, once separation has taken place, there is a region of eddy formations, a region of vortices created. That region of vortices created was called as what? Wake. 
it is called as weak. It causes drag, that's a different issue, but it is not called as drag, it is called as weak. It is not boundary layer, it is not lift. Answers are very easy question, it's called as weak. Next thing, most appropriate turbine to extract energy from water flow when the pressure head, volume, flow rate and the total power are high. Now, when you want to go for, I try to remember it like this, that extremes are Kaplan turbine and Pelton turbine. The mean is Francis turbine. So you see, he's asking about highest value, right? He's asking are high. So Francis cannot be correct. Furthermore, Pelton turbine, if you remember, it is having zero pressure. It is exposed to atmosphere. So it is not even valid for high pressure. It is rather for Kaplan turbine, you have high pressure, high flow rate and high power. Next question. The range of specific speed of Kaplan turbine. Again, Kaplan turbine has extreme level. So Kaplan turbine has highest specific speed. Now, strictly speaking, the specific speed of Kaplan turbine should range from 300 to 1000. Fine. <coughs> 30 to 60 is Felton, 60 to 30 is Francis, 300 to 1000 is valid for uh, Kaplan. So since 300 to 600 is there, I'll take 300 to 600 as an answer for Kaplan. Answer is option one. Next thing, cavitation. The very word cavitation means a region of low pressure. Fine. Wherever the pressure falls down below vapor pressure, over there you'll have those bubbles created that is called as cavitation. Now you see, the question is saying cavitation hydro propeller is mainly caused by. First option itself is saying low pressure region formed due to relative motion of fluid and propeller blades. This actually is correct. If you still want to read the other options, the options are impingement of contaminants in water on the surface of the propeller, wear and tear due to constant movement of propellers in the water. No, wear and tear has nothing to do with uh, cavitation. It is a result of cavitation though, but it is not cavitation itself. Increased torque on the propeller leading to increased temperature of the fluid around the propeller. Again, temperature is not important in the case of cavitation for us. Moving further. The question says an incompressible fluid flow over a flat plate with zero pressure gradient. The boundary layer thickness is 1 mm at a location where Reynolds number is 1000. That means you are having laminar boundary layer. The purpose of mentioning this 1000 over here is to indicate that you are having laminar zone. If the velocity of the fluid alone is increased, again, alone is increased, then the increase by a factor of 4, then the boundary layer thickness at the same location is equal to how much? Let us see how to solve this thing. Now, in this, if you remember, the formula for delta, that is boundary layer uh, thickness in laminar boundary layer, it was given by k into root over of x times nu upon u infinity. That means delta is inversely proportional to u infinity. So I can write delta 2 upon delta 1 is equal to root over of u infinity 1 by u infinity 2. Now delta 2 we have to find out. Delta of 1 happens to be 1 mm is equal to root over u infinity 1 is u infinity let us say u infinity 2 is equal to 4 times u infinity it is 4 times u infinity that is 1 by root 4 will be the answer that is 1 by 2 so delta is going to be equal to 1 by 2 mm which is option 2 the correct answer over here is option 2 you should remember whenever the velocity is increased the boundary layer region becomes thinner but denser Dense in the sense, shear stresses will increase. Next question. Stream function. Stream function definition wise is a function defined along a streamline such that it takes a constant value along a streamline. So delta psi is equal to 0 along a streamline. Along streamline. Let us see which option supports this thing. Stream function is not defined along streamline. That is wrong. Is 0 is wrong. Increase along streamline is wrong. It is constant. Option 4 is the correct answer over here. Stream function remains constant along a particular streamline. Next question. Which of the following statements are true? Now, whenever I see these questions where multiple options could be the answer, the best way is to go for elimination technique. If you do not know all the answers also, still you will be able to answer it. Let us see. A streak line is a curve connecting all points in a flow along which a fluid particle moves in a time. This rather be a definition of path line. The motion of a fluid particle during a period of time is the path line basically. So straight away option A is wrong. Wherever I see option A, I would take it as wrong. Let us say if I guess the answer, my probability of getting correct answer would be 50% now. Okay, increase from 25%. Let us move further. I see over here that B happens to be correct. So there's no need to check B. 
I look at C and D over here. Let us look at C. For a steady flow, path lines, streamlines, and streak lines coincide. Theek hai, they are basically identical. Fine, accept it. Option D is saying the separation between two streamlines is proportional to velocity. It is perfectly wrong. Remember, separation between two streamlines is inversely proportional to velocity. By continuity equation, you should know that the discharge here and the discharge here, both of them are same. So if the distance between two streamlines if increase, the velocity is supposed to decrease. In order to compensate the area, the velocity will decrease. So velocity is inversely proportional to distance between the two streamlines. So option D over here is wrong. So correct answer is over here, option 1, which is saying B and C. The answer over here is option 1. Next question. For an arbitrary floating body in a liquid, the line of action of buoyancy force acts through. It acts through center of buoyancy. Which point is center of buoyancy? The point of the point which is a centroid of displaced volume. Let us see. Center of gravity of floating body? No. Lowest point of displaced volume? Again wrong. Center of mass of floating body? Again wrong. Centroid of displaced volume? Yes. This is a point about which the uh, force of buoyancy is passing. Therefore, this point is also called as center of buoyancy. Answer is option 4. Option 4 is the correct answer. Let us also take the questions from mechanics now, engine mechanics. Five questions have come, very simple questions. Let us see. The first question, linear velocity of a body rotating with angular velocity omega along the circular path R is defined as. Now this is something which you don't have to study mechanics for this thing. You should be knowing velocity is equal to R omega. For this, there is no need to be studying mechanics. Directly you could say answer is equal to R omega. Take it. Option 4 would be correct over here. <coughs> Excuse me. Next thing. A vehicle has circular wheel of radius of gyration 0 0.5 meter. Calculation is required. K is 0 0.5 meter. Mass of the vehicle happens to be 1000 kg. If the, if the starting torque of the vehicle is 1000 Newton meter, torque is equal to 1000 Newton meter. The angular acceleration of the vehicle is equal to how much? Alpha is equal to how much? Now recall, what is alpha given by? You should be knowing that, <coughs> you should be knowing that torque is equal to I alpha. And I is equal to how much? Mk square. So torque is equal to Mk square times alpha. Therefore, the value of alpha has to be equal to how much? Torque upon Mk square. Torque upon Mk square. Let us write. Torque is equal to 1000. Mass again is equal to 1000. K square. K is equal to 0 0.5. I can write 0 0.5 as 1 by 2. 1 by 2 whole square. 1000, 1000 cancel off. 1 divided by 1 by 2 whole square is going to be equal to 4. Answer is supposed to be 4 radians per second square. Very good. Option is answer 3. Sorry. For a redundant frame. Ab redundancy. What is redundancy? Redundancy basically is something which is beyond requirement, extra, more than required. For a redundant frame, the number of members and the number of joints are related by what equation? Recall, for a perfect frame, the equation is m is equal to 2j minus 3. If you remember my class, you would remember 1, 2, 3 rule. It is 1, 2, 3. Now, you want more members in this thing. So, therefore, the equation is supposed to be m greater than 2j minus 3. m greater than 2j minus 3 is option option 2 next thing consider the following statements for a solid for a consider the following statements for the force of solid friction solid friction basically means dry friction or coulomb's friction so basically this question is coming from coulomb's laws of dry friction the options over, the statements over here are option a p is directly proportional to normal reaction between the two surfaces correct friction force if you recall is proportional to normal that is why we say friction is equal to mu times normal next statement Friction opposes the motion between the two surfaces. A better statement would be uh, relative motion between the two surfaces. But since he has mentioned between the two surfaces, acceptable. Friction does not depend on the material of two surfaces. As a matter of fact, it does. You see, friction force is equal to how much? Mu times n. Now, mu is a binary property. It depends on both the materials in contact. So this statement C over here is wrong. So, if statement C is wrong, statement A is correct, 
statement b also i would take as correct because he is saying opposes the motion between the two surfaces the very word between the two surfaces is telling you relative motion so a and b are correct statement 1 would be correct over here or uh, option 1 would be correct over here option 1 is correct next thing a screw jack with helix angle of thread theta and angle of friction beta has the maximum efficiency for maximum efficiency if you remember the condition is the helix angle is equal to 45 degrees minus angle of friction phi angle of friction phi is given as beta over here so theta is equal to 45 degrees minus beta minus beta uh, minus beta by 2 rather minus beta by 2 so therefore if you multiply 2 on either side it is going to be 2 theta 2 theta is equal to pi by 2 minus beta pi by 2 minus beta is over here answer is option 1 2 theta is equal to pi by 2 minus beta so these are the questions in the subject of uh, fluid mechanics and mechanics i'll hand over to the next faculty who will take the subject of strength of materials thank you all the very best So coming to the strength of material and machine design combination, uh, combination manake 35 questions ochini. out of 35, 23 from uh, strength of material, remaining part machine design. I will take care about the strength of material, Dharan Sath will take care about the machine design part. See the first question, all questions are standard ochini. Manake minimum 50, 10 minutes time we can uh, answer all these questions. Let us take this one, first one, a rectangular cross section beam subjected to the maximum shear force E of the shear stress at the top edge. In case of beams, at the bottom on the top edge, shear is 0. Option 3 is correct for this question. Let us move to the next question. This is the volumetric strain under triaxial loading case. Volumetric strain direct form like this. Sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z divided by e into 1 minus 2 mu. So, the answer man can tell you. Option 1 is correct for this one. Let us move to the next question. This is a standard case. The static deflection at the free end of cantilever beam with a UDL. UDL cantilever. So, omega L rise to 4 divided by 80i, it is standard case, manke. option 1 is correct uh, for this question. Let us move to the next question. The unit of shear modulus, mega pascal, mega pascal is the unit we are identifying for the stress and length modulus, correct option is option 4 for this question. Let us move to the next question. Total elongation of the bar due to its self-weight, self-weight elongation, we have a classroom lo gamma ni specific representation, but here we have a W which is small w, manake gamma L square divided by 2 e, gamma place lo meri W is jendi. So, W L square divided by 2 e is the correct option. Option 2 is correct for this question. Let us move to the next question. If relations already manak classroom lo study jesh na manu, relation between rate of loading and shear force and bending moment, these three options are correct. 
సో ఏబిసి వీఆర్ ఐడెంటిఫై గెట్ నెంబర్ టూ సో దీనికి సెకండ్ ఈజ్ కరెక్ట్ ఆన్సర్ మనకి లెట్స్ మూవ్ టు ద నెక్స్ట్ క్వశ్చన్ యంగ్స్ మోడ్లస్ ఈజ్ గివెన్ బై రిలేషన్ ఇచ్చారండి మళ్ళీ అగైన్ సో నైన్ కేజీ డివైడెడ్ బై త్రీ జీ ప్లస్ కే ఇది మనకి ఆప్షన్ వన్ ఈజ్ కరెక్ట్ ఫర్ దిస్ క్వశ్చన్ లెట్స్ మూవ్ టు ద నెక్స్ట్ క్వశ్చన్ అగైన్ ఇది స్టాండర్డ్ కేస్ సింప్లీ సపోర్టెడ్ బీమ్ పాయింట్ లోడ్ ఎట్ అ సెంటర్ మనకి స్లోప్ ఎట్ బోత్ సపోర్ట్స్ దగ్గర అడిగాడు దట్ షుడ్ బీ ఈక్వల్ టు పిఎల్ స్క్వేర్ అపాన్ సిక్స్టీన్ ఈఐ ఆప్షన్ త్రీ ఈజ్ కరెక్ట్ ఫర్ దిస్ క్వశ్చన్ ఇది కూడా మనకు స్టాండర్డ్ కేస్ గానే మనం స్టడీ చేశాం లెట్స్ మోర్ ద నెక్స్ట్ క్వశ్చన్ కన్సిడర్ ద ఫాలోయింగ్ స్టేట్మెంట్స్ ఇక్కడ కొంచెం అంబిక్విటీ ఉంది కొంచెం కన్ఫ్యూజ్ అయ్యే ఛాన్స్ ఉంది రీడ్ ద క్వశ్చన్ ఈక్వల్ అండ్ ఆపోజిట్ యాక్సిల్ స్ట్రెసెస్ యాక్ట్ ఆన్ టూ మ్యూచువల్లీ పర్పెండిక్యులర్ ప్లేన్స్ ఈక్వల్ అండ్ ఆపోజిట్ లెట్ అస్ టేక్ దిస్ నార్మల్ స్ట్రెస్ కండిషన్ మనం తీసుకుంటే ఇది టెన్షన్ ఇది కంప్రెషన్ సో సిగ్మా సిగ్మా బోత్ ఆర్ ఈక్వల్ ఇది మనకు దేన్ని ఇస్తుందండి ప్యూర్ షియర్ కండిషన్ దట్స్ ఫైన్ దీనికి మనకి మూర్ సర్కిల్ తీసుకుంటే ఎస్ ఆరిజిన్ అనేది మనకి సెంటర్ అనేది ఆరిజిన్ దగ్గర కోయిన్ సైడ్ అయి ఉంటుంది బి దగ్గర చూడండి ఈక్వల్ యాక్సియల్ స్ట్రెసెస్ యాక్ట్ ఆన్ టూ మ్యూచువల్లీ పర్పెండిక్యులర్ ప్లేన్స్ అనేది ఇది హైడ్రోస్టాటిక్ కండిషన్ ఆల్రెడీ మనకు తెలిసింది హైడ్రోస్టాటిక్ కండిషన్లో మోర్ సర్కిల్ అనేది ఇట్ బికమ్స్ ఏ పాయింట్ సర్కిల్ ఆప్షన్ సి చూడండి నాకు ఇక్కడ కొంచెం అమిక్విటీ ఉంది ప్లేన్స్ ఆర్ ఫ్రీ ఆఫ్ షియర్ దిస్ ఈజ్ నథింగ్ బట్ ప్రిన్సిపల్ ప్లేన్స్ ప్రిన్సిపల్ ప్లేన్స్ అని అడిగాడు ప్రిన్సిపల్ ప్లేన్స్కి సంబంధించి మోర్ సర్కిల్ ఏంటి అన్నాడు మోర్ సర్కిల్ ఇక్కడ ప్రిన్సిపల్ స్ట్రెసెస్ అనేవి ఈక్వల్ అన్ ఈక్వల్ అనేది క్లారిటీ అవ్వలేదు కాబట్టి మేబీ ఎనీ ఛాన్స్ ఉంది ఇక్కడ చూడండి ఇవి రెండు ప్రిన్సిపల్ స్ట్రెసెస్ కదండి ఇక్కడ మోర్ సర్కిల్ పాయింట్ సర్కిల్ అయిందా నో ఇట్స్ నాట్ ఏ పాయింట్ సర్కిల్ సో దీన్ని బేస్ చేసుకున్నప్పుడు మనకు విచ్ ఆప్షన్ ఈజ్ కరెక్ట్ ఓన్లీ సో లుక్ ఎట్ హియర్ ఇక్కడ నౌ ఫర్ ఏ మోర్ సర్కిల్ టు రెడ్యూస్ టు ద పాయింట్ ఇది కీ వర్డ్ మనకు వచ్చేటప్పుడు విచ్ ఆఫ్ ద ఫాలోయింగ్ స్టేట్మెంట్ ఈజ్ కరెక్ట్ ఇది ఒకటే స్టేట్మెంట్ ఈజ్ కరెక్ట్ హైడ్రోస్టాటిక్ కండిషన్ ఆప్షన్ బి ఈజ్ కరెక్ట్ ఫర్ దిస్ క్వశ్చన్ సో వన్ ఈజ్ కరెక్ట్ ఆప్షన్ now come to the next question the maximum stress intensity due to the suddenly applied load two times it already manaku telusu two times sigma due to the suddenly applied load it is a two times a sigma due to the gradually applied load idu kuda manam classroom lo chusam mana so option 1 is correct for this question let's move to the next question direct formula pd divided by 2t for circumferential stress pd divided by 40 for longitudinal stress ratio తీసుకుంటే మనకి టూ ఆప్షన్ త్రీ ఈజ్ కరెక్ట్ ఫర్ దిస్ క్వశ్చన్ లెట్స్ మూవ్ టు ద నెక్స్ట్ క్వశ్చన్ విచ్ ఆఫ్ ద ఫాలోయింగ్ స్టేట్మెంట్స్ ఈజ్ కరెక్ట్ ట్రూ స్ట్రెస్ ఈజ్ ఆల్వేస్ గ్రేటర్ దాన్ అగైన్ ఇక్కడ కొంత కన్ఫ్యూజన్ ఉంది ఆల్వేస్ గ్రేటర్ దాన్ ద ఇంజనీరింగ్ స్ట్రెస్ ఇన్ ద ప్లాస్టిక్ రీజియన్ సో ఆల్ ఆప్షన్స్లో మనకి ప్లాస్టిక్ రీజియన్లో రిలేషన్ బిట్వీన్ ద ట్రూ అండ్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ స్ట్రెస్ ఇచ్చాడు యూజువల్లీ మనం ల్యాబ్లో సింపుల్ టెన్షన్ టెస్ట్ కండక్ట్ చేస్తాం సింపుల్ టెన్షన్ టెస్ట్లో ప్లాస్టిక్ రీజియన్లో ఇన్స్టాంటేనియస్ ఏరియా అనేది డ్రాస్టిక్గా రిడక్షన్ ఉంటుంది కంపారిటివ్లీ ఇనీషియల్ ఏరియా ఆబ్వియస్లీ మనకి దీన్ని బేస్ చేసుకున్నప్పుడు టూ స్ట్రెస్ స్ట్రెస్ ఫామ్లో మనకు ఆల్రెడీ తెలుసు పీ బై ఏ యాజ్ ఏ ఈజ్ డ్రాగ్యువల్ ఇట్ ఈస్ డిక్రీజ్డ్ స్ట్రెస్ ఈజ్ గోయింగ్ టు బి ఇంక్రీజ్డ్ దీన్ని బేస్ చేసుకున్నప్పుడు టూ స్ట్రెస్ వాల్యూస్ ఆల్వేస్ గ్రేటర్ దాన్ ద ఇంజనీరింగ్ స్ట్రెస్ ఆప్షన్ వన్ ఈజ్ కరెక్ట్ ఫర్ దిస్ క్వశ్చన్ లెట్స్ మోన్ ద నెక్స్ట్ క్వశ్చన్ అగైన్ ఇది standard case for a simply supported beams the bending moment at the supports both supports will permit the rotation so bending moment will be zero at both supports option 3 is correct for this question let's move to the next question poc point of contra flexion is nothing but where the moment changes its sign already idi manaka definition manaku telusu option 3 is correct for this question let's move to the next question shear force developed in a cantilever beam subjected to the point load at the free end is మాక్సిమం షియర్ ఫోర్స్ అడిగాడు ఇది కూడా మనకు స్టాండర్డ్ కేసే కదండి సో ఇది పి షియర్ డయాగ్రామ్ మనం తీసుకుంటే ఎస్ దిస్ ఈజ్ అ షియర్ ఫోర్స్ డయాగ్రామ్ ఇక్కడ నాకు పి ఇక్కడ నాకు పి సో ఆప్షన్ విచ్ ఆప్షన్ ఈజ్ కరెక్ట్ ఆప్షన్ త్రీ ఈజ్ కరెక్ట్ ఫర్ దిస్ క్వశ్చన్ లెట్స్ మోన్ ద నెక్స్ట్ క్వశ్చన్ ఎ క్యాంటిలివర్ బీమ్ విత్ కాన్సన్ట్రేటెడ్ లోడ్ పి ఇట్ ఈస్ లోడెడ్ వర్టికల్ ఎట్ ద ఫ్రీ అండ్ ద స్ట్రెయిన్ ఎనర్జీ ఇన్ ద బీమ్ ఇక్కడ కూడా కొంత కన్ఫ్యూజ్ అయిన ఛాన్స్ ఉంది లెటెస్ట్ టేక్ దిస్ వన్ ప్రీవియస్ కేసు లాంటిది ఇది కూడా మనకి ఈ కేసులో మనకి ఏంటంటే క్యాంటీ లివర్ బీమ్ ఇక్కడ పాయింట్ లోడ్ యాక్ట్
for a cantilever beam carrying a UDL load, the shear force across the length of variation at the end. As we know, shear force diagram 1 degree higher than the loading diagram. So, obviously, it is taking a linear variation. Option 4 is correct for this question. All are standard cases. Now, let me take this one. For a simply supported beam of length L with a triangular load that varies gradually, that is a linear manner, from 0 at both ends to omega per unit length at the center, the maximum bending moment. It is a symmetrical loading case. Obviously, in case of symmetrical loading case, maximum bending moment is available at the mid span. What is the loading condition? This is the loading condition. It is clearly mentioned. Let us mark this as a, a B, C. See the grunach maximum moment on the L by 2. Reactions can man find out just say idhna omega L by 4 and this is omega L by 4. You know how to calculate the reactions. Where we require the bending moment? Bending moment we required at center. Now let us take this one. This part you can consider how many loads we are observing? Two loads we are observing. Let us take this is one load. Then point load lo converge and point load lo converge is half into omega into L by 2. Then distance and then L by 6. Now, let us take the maximum bending moment. Maximum bending moment is going to pass this load. Reaction omega L by 4 at a distance of L by 2 positive minus half into omega into L by 2 at a distance of L by 6. Then simplify just the manke omega L square divided by 12 was the good standard case can man treat just in classroom low. So, then solve we can easily pick the answer omega L square divided by 12. Option 2 is correct for this question. Let us move on to the next question. Modulus of elastic. Modulus of section. Section modulus. Bending modulus is a for triangular case. So, in case of, sorry, in case of circular section, ZNA manake already this is a standard case. Can I treat just on pi by 32 d cube. Observe the pi, observe pi by 32 d cube. So, option 3 is correct for this question. Let us move on to the next question. The ratio of equivalent length and actual length of the column with both ends fixed. Both ends fixed low LE and then both ends fixed low LE equal to L by 2, obviously. Then adding in the end, LE divided by L. L by 2 divided by L. 1 by 2 na. So 1 by 2 option 3 is correct for this question. Let us move on to the next question. A cantilever of length L carries gradually, uh, that is linear varying load from 0 at its free end to omega per unit length at the fixed end. The product of deflection and flexural rigidity at the free end. This is the standard case. Now, when I am talking about the cantilever with a triangular load, obviously we know that this is omega. Deflection at the free end is omega L raised to 4 divided by 30 i. What did you mean? Product y into ei. This is asking y value omega l raised to 4 divided by 30 ei into ei getting cancelled. Final answer omega l raised to 4 divided by 30. Identify it. So option 4 is correct for this question. Option 4. Let us move on to the next question. A solid circular shaft under torsion, the strain energy per unit volume is given by torsion low manke. Strain energy per unit volume that is a small u, u by e tau square divided by 4 g. This is a standard case. Hai. Option 4 is correct for this question. Let us move on to the next question. Shear stress developed at the center of the solid circular shaft under torsion. Stress diagram and mano observe yes, it is taking linear variation with 0 at the center and a maximum at the circumferential. At the center the gargabati at center tau equal to 0. Option 1 is correct. These are the simple questions we are having from strength of material. See, correct answer is within 5 to 10 minutes learning questions me easy answer jagal row. Hope you did very well in this examination. Now, the next one is a theory of missions. Sir will take care about the theory of missions part.
right see pranavras uh, i'm sorry this is option 3 is correct kar manavras in the correct hai 9 kg equal to 9 kg divided by 3k plus z so this one is correct my dear friend option 3 is correct this is uh, incorrect next vachina appudiki thin cylinder ok sar chudandi thin cylinder if you take adigindi ratio of hoop to longitudinal look at here circumferential to longitudinal adigindi sigma c anta pd divided by 2t sigma l anta andi pd divided by 4t adigindi sigma c to sigma l pd divided by 2t divided by pd divided by 4t 4 by 2 na 2 is answer we are having so option 3 deeni correct adi manaki just adi relation matram just adi option 3 9 kg divided by 3k plus g is correct idi correct hai nandi idi correct hai manaku ochina appudu hope it is clear to you pranavras hope it is clear to you right other guy deeni okka sari check chesukomma adigindi sigma c to sigma l ओके ना डन Welcome everyone. Now we'll be discussing the questions from the theory of machines and vibrations. Here is the first question. Consider the following statement for the coefficient of fluctuation of speed of flywheel. Uh, here the formula of coefficient of fluctuation in speed is given in the form of statements A, B, and C. So which of the following statements is correct? First one it says that maximum speed minus minimum speed by average speed. That is C S. We know this is the general or this is the standard formula. C S is equal to omega max minus omega minimum divided by omega average divided by omega average this is one formula guys the another formula uh, for writing the fluctuation in energy or maximum fluctuation in kinetic energy maximum fluctuation in kinetic energy 
we write it as k max minus k minimum or which is also delta k e max which is also written as delta k e max this is equal to i omega square times of c s this is a very first der uh, derivation in the flywheels chapter so here we can write c s is equal to delta k e max divided by i omega square omega or average square i must be writing so this i times of omega average square can be written as 2 times of average kinetic energy or kinetic energy at average speed okay so here statement a is correct this is correct as well as let us check the statement b that is maximum fluctuation of energy by 2 times of kinetic energy at of the flywheel at mean speed yes statement b is correct and statement c says that maximum fluctuation of energy divided by kinetic energy of the flywheel at mean speed so statement c is wrong guys so here we have to check the options which are indicating both a and b so that is option 4 is the option here guys option 4 is the answer okay very simple and straightforward question guys next one is uh, for the grubblers criteria for planar mechanisms with constrained motion is given by so for constrained motion constrained motion or completely constrained motion okay degree of freedom degree of freedom will be equal to 1 guys degree of freedom will be equal to 1 if i say if it is incompletely constrained motion then degree of freedom will be greater than 1 okay it will be greater than 1 so this is a standard case guys so now we can write we can write the formula for grubblers criteria that is dof is equal to 3n minus 1 minus 2j minus 2j okay so this is equal to 1 guys so i can write this as 3n minus 3 minus 2j minus 1 guys this will be minus 1 is equal to 0 so this will be equal to 3n minus 2j minus 4 is equal to 0 this will be the criteria for completely constrained mechanism or kinematic mechanism okay so option 4 is the answer guys option 4 is the answer okay next one for the over damp system the damping factor yes guys this is a very standard case and a very simple one so there are uh, four types of damping so for undamped undamped zeta will be equal to 0 zeta less than 1 will be under damped okay zeta less than 1 will be under damped okay for this zeta less than 1 we will see the system is having some oscillations oscillations in the decaying pattern similarly zeta is equal to 1 is called as critically damped so this is actually minimum amount of damping for which there will be no oscillations this is minimum amount of damping for which there will be no oscillations and zeta greater than 1 we call it as over damped okay zeta greater than 1 is called as over damped and where zeta is the damping factor guys so the damping factor is for over damped system it should be greater than 1 guys it should be greater than 1 so option 4 is the answer guys okay next question the movability of statically indeterminate structure statically indeterminate this statically indeterminate we call it as also redundant structure redundant structure or we call this as also superstructure guys okay so it is when the movability of the mechanism if it is 2 then we call it as incompletely constrained mechanism and if it is 0 we call it as structure if it is less than 1 if it is negative then we call it as statically indeterminate structure and if it is equal to 1 then we call it as completely constrained mechanism so as per the question guys the answer will be option 2 as per the question the answer will be option 2 next one the number of instantaneous center for the five link mechanism is dash guys number of i centers is given by the formula that is equal to n c2 so 5 c2 which is equal to 5 into 4 divided by 1 into 2 which is equal to 10 so 10 i centers will be there for 5 bar mechanism that is option 
sorry it is not uh, yeah this will be two ones and two twos so pi two ten ten i centers will be there option three is the answer guys option three is the answer okay so these are the questions guys from the theory of machines and vibrations Uh, next uh, subject will be thermal engineering. Hi students, welcome to the thermal engineering. First let us take the very first question. Before going to take the questions, dear friends you know 30 questions, 30 questions are right? 30 into 2, 60 mark. And you are thermal comfortable and production comfortable and you are the government job. Okay? So first let us take the very first question, try to read the very first question. It is asked like this. In a Brayton cycle for a power plant, choose the option that arranges the following process in the correct sequence. The process connected to Brayton cycle are 1, 2, 2, isentropic compression, isentropic compression, 2, 2, 3, constant pressure heat addition, constant pressure heat supplied process, 3 to 4, 3 to 4, isentropic expansion, isentropic expansion and 4 to 1, 4 to 1, constant pressure heat rejection. This is the order, constant pressure heat rejection process. So anyhow, the very first process is isentropic compression, isentropic compression. Second one is isobaric heat addition, isobaric heat addition, this is the first process. Uh, second process. Isentropic expansion, this is the third process and fourth process, right? Fourth process is isobaric heat rejection. 2143, 2143 means uh, uh, B, 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 A, B, A, D, C, B, A, D, C, absolutely correct. Okay, no? Similarly, look at the another important question. It is asked like this. The thermodynamic difference between Rankine cycle working with the saturated steam. Generally, Rankine cycle is working with the superheated steam, but this is a special case where the saturated steam is allowed for the Rankine cycle also in addition to Carnot cycle. Then look at the first statement, Rankine cycle is hypothetical. No, Rankine cycle is the practical cycle for thermoelectric power plant. Carnot cycle cannot work with saturated steam. No, Carnot cycle has to work with the saturated steam. Third statement, heat is supplied to water at at a temperature below maximum temperature of the cycle. Yes, for the Rankine cycle, you know subcooled water is entering to the boiler. That subcooled water is increasing its temperature at constant pressure by the time it is taking the heat from the combustion products. Anyhow, for the Rankine cycle, heat can be supplied at a temperature. Heat can be supplied to water at a temperature below the maximum temperature. 
therefore the third statement is absolutely correct last statement rank and cycle receives heat at two process until unless there is no reheating process heat is taking right by the rank and cycle only in the single process okay similarly look at the another important other another question the degree of reaction in impulse stays it may not be impulse stays it is impulse turbine the degree of reaction of an impulse stage of turbine or compressor dear friends remember for the impulse turbine the degree of reaction is zero because there is no pressure drop the blades are arranged such that for having the uniform area of the flow as long as the area of the flow remains same right area of the flow remains same there is no pressure drop there is no enthalpy drop therefore degree of reaction for the impulse turbine is zero okay similarly look at the another question it is the match list 1 and list 2 kind of question across the rotor across the stator across the stage first statement stagnation enthalpy is constant relative stagnation enthalpy is constant third statement enthalpy is constant here dear friends this this problem can be answered by elimination technique you know across the stage enthalpy is always enthalpy is always changing so no statement among the 1 2 3 is given enthalpy is dropping that's why the c is not connected to anyone look at the option 3 option 3 c match to none this is easily decided by elimination technique therefore i am selecting the option 3 understood similarly look at the another question try to read it in a carnot cycle the thermal efficiency may be increased by decreasing the lower temperature absolutely correct keeping the lowest temperature constant no increasing the highest temperature this also correct also correct also correct 8 minute thermal efficiency can be increased by thermal efficiency of the carnot cycle can be increased by increasing the higher temperature also increasing the lower temperature no 1 and 3 are correct but among the 1 and 3 you need to select the most appropriate answer dear friends remember the carnot cycle can be the carnot cycle efficiency can be increased by by in decreasing the lowest absolute temperature in the better manner rather than increasing the highest absolute temperature therefore it is better to select the first statement that is the first option once again the carnot cycle efficiency can be increased by either by decreasing the lower absolute temperature or by increasing the highest absolute temperature but the best way for increasing the for increasing the carnot cycle efficiency is by decreasing the lowest absolute temperature therefore first statement is absolutely correct first statement is absolutely correct right look at the next question try to read it comparing the case of intercooling with no intercooling the heat supplied to brayton cycle is yes with intercooling mechanism the gas is entering to the combustion chamber at low temperature since the gas is entering to the combustion chamber with intercooling at low temperature for increasing the temperature from low temperature for increasing the temperature from low temperature to peak temperature definitely more heat is required for the brayton cycle with intercooling mechanism therefore first statement that means first option is absolutely correct okay similarly look at the another question the compression process for uncooled uncooled means heat transfer q equal to 0 the compression process for uncooled rotary compressor the heat transfer zero uncooled means that process is called adiabatic process the process in which the heat transfer is zero is called adiabatic process that means the casing of the compressor might be perfectly insulated so anyhow the second statement is second state second answer is absolutely correct similarly look at the another question the relation for specific heats the relation between the cp and cv cp minus cv equal to vt beta square by kt that is the isothermal isothermal compressibility factor that is absolutely correct this is the standard re relation cp minus cv equal to vt beta square that is the volume expansivity divided by kt that is the correct answer okay similarly look at the another question what happens the entropy if a closed system undergoes in irreversible process must decrease remains constant can increase decrease or remain constant dear friends if the process is happening irreversibly 
definitely the entropy may be increasing or decreasing or remaining constant because it is given only about the irreversibilities. What about the heat transfer? Once I consider the heat transfer in addition to the irreversibility, that heat transfer may be either from system to surroundings or from surroundings to system. So based on the heat transfer, that is either the gas is cooling or heating, the entropy cannot be decided only by irreversibility. That's why entropy may be increasing or decreasing or remaining constant. Got that point? If the heat transfer is happening to the system, the entropy increases. If the heat transfer is happening from system to surroundings, entropy may be remaining constant or decreasing. That's why we are selecting the third statement or third option is correct. Okay. Similarly, look at the another question. The coefficient of, coefficients of performance, coefficient of performance of a refrigerator working as a heat pump. You know COP of the heat pump. COP of the heat pump is equal to 1 plus COP of the refrigerator. This is the standard relation. Look at the relation. COP of the heat pump equal to COP of the refrigerator plus 1. Option 4 is correct. Are you following? Yes. Look at the next question. Consider the following. The various process with their types of air refrigeration working on reversed Brayton cycle. The problem is given for reversed Brayton cycle. The reversed Brayton cycle is having four processes. Two are isentropic process and two are isobaric process. It means for the reversed Brayton cycle, that is Bell-Kalman cycle, heat supplied and heat rejection taking place at constant pressure and compression and expansion are happening at constant to entropy, that is isentropic process. So compression is happening, compression is happening isentropically. Heat rejection is happening isobarically. Expansion is happening isentropically. Heat absorption also happening isobarically. So anyhow, A3, 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 B1, A3, B1 and C, C3, A3, B1, C3, A3, B1, C3 and D1, I can select the second statement is correct. Once again, for the Bell-Kalman cycle, like reverse Brayton cycle, heat supplied and heat rejection at constant pressure and compression and expansion are happening reversible adiabatically, that is isentropically. Okay. Similarly, look at the another question. Identify the correct statements in the following with respect to heat and work. They are exact differentials. No, heat and work are inexact differentials. They are path dependent quantities. They are path function quantities, absolutely correct. They are boundary phenomena, absolutely correct. Op D, they are point function quantities. No, only properties are coming under point function quantities. Only B and C are correct. Look at the second one. Second is the correct answer. Okay. Similarly, look at the another question. When a mag mixer of air and water vapor, when a mixer of air and water vapor is cooled at constant pressure, up to saturation temperature of water vapor, the temperature attained is known as dew point temperature. That means when you cool the atmospheric air, you know atmospheric air is the mixture of dry air and water vapor. When you cool the atmospheric air to saturation temperature, it reaches to the saturation state, the temperature where the water vapor present in the atmospheric air starts condensation is called dew point temperature. Anyhow, the saturation temperature by the saturation state or the saturation temperature obtained by cooling the mixture of air and water vapor, right, isobarically is the dew point temperature. It is like this. If I take the temperature versus entropy coordinate system, temperature versus entropy coordinate system, the saturation dome is looking like this. This is the saturation dome. This is the partial pressure of the water vapor. This is the partial pressure of the water vapor. Initially, initially, the atmospheric air may be available somewhere at this particular state. You cool the atmospheric air to saturation state. Once it reaches to saturation state, the temperature corresponding to that saturation state is called dew point temperature. Okay. Anyhow, option 1 is absolutely, option 1 is absolutely correct. Okay. Similarly, look at the another question. An example of nearly reversible process is expansion and compression of spring. Absolutely correct. Plastic deformation, no, it is irreversible process. Electricity through a resistance, irreversible process. 
combustion and heat transfer. Combustion process are always coming under irreversible process. Expansion and compression are coming under right reversible process. Therefore, you can select the first option. Similarly, look at the another one. A gas engine working on auto cycle, auto cycle has a clearance volume 10% of the swept volume. It is given the clearance volume Vc is equal to 0.1 times the swept volume. Then compression ratio. You know compression ratio Rc equal to Vs plus Vc dividing by Vc. It is equal to Vs plus Vc equal to 0.1 Vs dividing by 0.1 Vs. You simplify this for getting the 11. That is the answer. Look at the answer. Answer 2. 2 is correct. Are you following? Yes. Look at the next question. Try to read this question. Try to read it clearly. 1.5 kg mass of water. Yes, this is a problem which is required calculator. Without calculator, this problem cannot be solved. 1.5 kg mass of water. Mass of the water is given. 1.5 kg. 1.5 kg. Initial temperature of water is 20 degrees centigrade. T1W is given 20 degrees centigrade. Will be heated to 90 degrees centigrade. Final temperature of the water, that is T2W, final temperature of the water, let me write it clearly, you should be very careful while uh, we are discussing the limited space, T2W is equal to 90 degrees centigrade. In a temperature with a 1500 watts, that means electrical energy supplied to the heater, electrical energy supplied to the heater is 1500 watts, 1500 watts. The teapot weight is 0.75 kg, mass of the teapot given 0.75 kg, 0.75 kg and has an average specific heat of 0.8. Specific heat of the teapot is given 0.8 kilojoules per kg degree centigrade or kg Kelvin. Consider the specific heat of the water to be 4.18, that is standard value. Specific heat of the water is 4 point, how much it is given? 4.18. If not given in the exam, you can take 4.2 kilojoules per kg degree centigrade or kilojoules per kg Kelvin. Determine how long it will take to heat the water, assuming no heat loss from the teapot also. Assume that the properties of the both water and teapot remains constant during the heating process. That means, Temperature of the water is equal to temperature of the teapot. For this particular case, you need to take the energy balance equation. What kind of energy supply to the system? Energy supply to the system is electrical energy. Electrical energy is coming under high grade energy. High grade energy can be completely converted to other kind of energy. Therefore, that electrical energy which is supplied to the or that heater is converted to heat energy, that heat energy is causing for increasing the temperature of the both teapot and water from 20 degree centigrade to 90 degree centigrade. Therefore, the energy balance equation is, the energy balance equation is like this. The electrical energy, listen carefully, the electrical energy supplied to the, electrical energy supplied to the, right, heater per second, since it is given, it is given, 1500 watts means joules per second, joules per second. It must be equal to heat required for, heat required for teapot plus heat required for, heat required for water. Here heat, right, heat required for teapot plus heat required for water dividing by the time required, dividing by time required. The heat required for teapot, the heat required for teapot equal to mass of the teapot into specific heat of the teapot, teapot into temperature change of the teapot that is 90 minus 20, 90 minus 20. Similarly, the heat transfer to the water equal to mass of the water into Cp of the water into temperature rise of the water 90 minus 20. All values are known, all values are known. You substitute here for getting the time, but you should be very careful with the units. Look at the specific heat. Specific heat is given, specific heat of the water given in kilojoules per kg Kelvin and specific heat of the teapot also given in kilojoules per kg Kelvin. 
on the other hand electric lange is given in joules per second better to convert it into kilojoules per second that is 1.5 kilojoules per second you take the 1.5 kilojoules per second in the left side right side you substitute those values dividing by time you simplify it for getting the answer i have calculator my ca i have calculated my calculator has shown 320.6 seconds it takes some time you please try to simplify with calculator without calculator you cannot do this problem you try to simplify with calculator for getting the answer right 320.6 seconds okay similarly look at the another question look at the another question it is asked like this assuming that the temperature of the air is constant and that the air is an ideal gas the atmospheric pressure variation with altitude at constant temperature atmospheric air pressure is varying exponentially this is the standard answer right second statement is absolutely correct look at the next question <coughs> look at the next one it is asked like this among the among the polytropic process which is the correct for n equal to 1 here polytropic rule is what pv power n equal to constant it is given that if n equal to 1 if n equal to 1 the rule is becoming pv equal to pv equal to a constant you know according to boyle's law at constant temperature product of pressure and volume remains constant at constant temperature means the process constant temperature process is also called isothermal process or adiabat or hyperbolic process fourth answer is absolutely correct got that point if n equal to 1 that process is coming under isothermal process may be called as hyperbolic process are you following yes similarly look at the next question it is asked like this an engine having brake thermal efficiency of 40% produces 20 kilowatts brake power what is the fuel consumption if the fuel used has a calorific value 60000 kilojoules per kg the brake thermal efficiency given brake thermal efficiency given 0.4 and brake power given brake power given 20 kilowatts 20 kilowatts what is the fuel consumption what is the amount of fuel firing inside the combustion chamber if the fuel is having the calorific value 60000 60000 kilojoules per kg very simple there is a standard formula for brake thermal efficiency the brake thermal efficiency brake thermal efficiency equal to brake power dividing by heat supplied equal to mass of the fuel firing into calorific value from this you first find the mass of the fuel firing inside the combustion chamber it gives in kg per second it gives in kg per second but look at the options all options are given in kilojoules per hour for getting in kilojoules per hour from kilojoule kilo sorry kilograms not kilojoules sorry from this you are getting the mass of the fuel in kg per second kg per second for getting it from kg per second to kilogram per hour you multiply with 3600 for getting the answer for getting the answer 3 kg per hour got that point you simplify it definitely your calculator will give this value but only the thing is you should be very careful with the units from this you are getting the mass flow rate is in kg per second but options are given in kg per hour for that you need to multiply 3600 for getting the correct answer so answer 3 okay similarly look at the another question choose the correct option for the critical pressure and temperature you know the pressure at the critical point is called critical pressure its value is 221 bar roughly and critical temperature is this is for water only this is for water only for water the critical pressure is 221 bar critical temperature is 374.14 degree centigrade look at the options critical pressure 221 bar 374 degree centigrade you can select the third statement okay similarly look at the next question this is the standard question relation between the or uh, 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 this is standard question for entropy change for a perfect gas which of the following is true dear friends remember in terms of temperatures and pressure limits the entropy change s2 minus s1 equal to cp ln t2 by t2 by t1 minus characteristic gas constant it is not universal gas constant it is characteristic gas constant 
or ln p2 by p1. This is the change in entropy general formula for any reversible process with ideal gas is the working material. Look at the options. Look at the option, option 2. S2 minus S1 equal to Cp ln T2 by T1 minus R ln P2 by P1. The second statement is absolutely correct. Okay. Similarly, look at the next question. Try to read it clearly. It is a very basic question. It is asked from the basics of thermodynamics. Consider the following and choose the only option in which the pairs are matched. Isolated system, right? open system, closed system, adiabatic system. One in which mass cannot cross the boundary of the system. Mass cannot cross the boundary of the system is closed system. Okay. Next, one which exchanges neither mass nor energy with the surroundings. Only in the isolated system, neither mass nor energy is crossing the boundary of the system. One which is thermally insulated from the surroundings, that is adiabatic system. One in which mass flows into the or out of the system. That means wherever the mass is crossing the boundary of the system along with the mass definitely energy is crossing the boundary of the system if both mass and energy are interacting between the system and surroundings that kind of system we are calling as thermodynamically calling as open system anyhow look at the options look at the options here a a2 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 b b4 b4 c1 c1 and D3. This is the correct answer. Look at the answers. A2, B4, C1, D3. Option 4. Last option is absolutely correct. Last option is absolutely correct. Understood? Yes. Similarly, look at the next question. In a non-flow reversible system, the work done per unit mass is expressed. It is for a closed system process. Closed system process, the energy balance equation is, energy balance equation Q equal to, 8 minute, Q equal to, heat transfer Q equal to W plus DU, W plus DU. But it is given for reversible process. For any reversible process, heat transfer Q equal to TDS. Heat transfer Q equal to TDS. So from this, right, I can write Q equal to TDS, TDS equal to W plus change in internal energy, final internal energy minus initial internal energy. Initial internal energy. From that, Work interaction equal to TDS, TDS minus U naught minus U1. That is the answer. Right? Look at the, look at the third one, third one, W equal TDS minus U naught minus U1. The third statement is absolutely correct. Okay? Similarly, look at the next question. Try to read it. It is connected to the real gas equation. The real gas equation is the Van der Waals equation. Van der Waals equation is P plus A by V square into V minus B is equal to RT. This is the Van der Waals equation or real gas equation. Look at the option uh, 2, P plus A by V square, V minus B, RT. Absolutely correct. Second statement is correct. That means second option is absolutely correct. Okay. Similarly, look at the next question. According to class A statement, which are the following? According to class A statement, heat cannot be transferring from low temperature location to high temperature location without help of any external source. That is the class A statement. Look at the first statement. Heat cannot transfer from heat to hotter body without any external work. That is absolutely true. According to class A statement, heat cannot transfer from cooler body to hotter body without any external work. The first statement is correct. Heat cannot transfer from cooler body to a hotter body without any external, external heat cannot transfer from a cooler body to a hotter body with, with right, without, so, so with is not correct. The second statement is not correct. Heat can transfer from a cooler body to hotter body without, no, right, third statement is not correct. Fourth statement, heat cannot transfer from hotter body, no, naturally heat can transfer from cooler body to hot body. Anyhow, heat cannot transfer from cooler body to hotter body without help of any external work. That is the class A statement. Okay. Similarly, look at the next question. Next question is, calculate the specific enthalpy of a given substance at a temperature of 25 degrees centigrade and pressure 25 megapascal. Pressure is given 25 megapascal. 
ट्वेंटी फाइव एक मिनट ट्वेंटी फाइव मेगा पास्कल प्रेशर इज गिवेन ट्वेंटी फाइव मेगा पास्कल इट इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड किलो पास्कल किलो पास्कल राइट हु स्पेसिफिक इंटरनल एनर्जी स्पेसिफिक इंटरनल एनर्जी एंड स्पेसिफिक वॉल्यूम दिस इज अ स्पेसिफिक इंटरनल एनर्जी स्पेसिफिक इंटरनल एनर्जी यू इज गिवेन फोर्टी वन किलो जोल्स पर फोर्टी वन किलो जूल्स पर के जी एंड स्पेसिफिक वॉल्यूम स्मॉल वी इक्वल टू पॉइंट थ्री जीरो पॉइंट जीरो 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 फाइव मीटर क्यू पर के जी मीटर क्यू पर के जी राइट नाउ यू आर आस्कू टू फाइंड द स्पेसिफिक एंथालफी स्पेसिफिक एंथालफी हेच इक्वल टू यू नो सिंपल फार्मुला यू प्लस पी वी यू प्लस पी वी ओनली द थिंग इज यू शुड बी वेरी केयरफुल विद द यूनिट्स दो द प्रेशर इज गिवन इन मेगा पास्कल इट शुड बी कन्वर्टेड टू किलो पास्कल देन ओनली यू कैन गेट द करेक्ट आंसर यू पुट इट दोज वैल्यूज लाइक फोर्टी वन प्लस प्रेशर इज ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड into v point zero 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 five meter cube per kg you simplify that value for getting fifty three point five kilojoules per kg I have simplified my calculator has shown fifty three point five dear friends remember for this particular problem temperature also given that temperature need not be used for this particular case it means sometimes some extra data will be given called superpolus data it is not compulsory to use all the data which is given in the problem. The problem solving is very similar to like how our mummy is preparing the chicken curry in the kitchen room. All items are available. Sugar is available, dal dal is available, kerosene is available. Is our mummy does our mummy using the kerosene for pre preparing the chicken curry? No, like that. This is a special problem where you should not use the right temperature. This is the extra data called superpolus data. Similarly, next question. Look at the next question. Try to read it. Which of the following statements pertaining to entropy are correct? The entropy of a substance, entropy of a system, reaches its minimum value when it is in a state of equilibrium with its surroundings. Absolutely wrong. Entropy of the universe keeping on increasing, right? Since entropy of the universe is keeping on increasing after some millions and billion crores of years. This universe comes to equilibrium state with infinite entropy. That is a state called universal death state. That means entropy of the universe never be decreasing. So first statement is absolutely wrong. Entropy is conserved in all reversible process. Dear friends, for this particular case, you have to consider this reversible process is totally reversible process. Totally reversible process means external irreversibility Q zero and internal irreversibility I zero. For a totally reversible process, definitely entropy is coming under conservable quantity. Don't get confused. Generally, entropy is not coming under conservable quantity. Your mass is coming under conservable quantity. Energy is coming under conservable quantity. But entropy is not coming under conservable quantity. But there is a special case in which where the external heat transfer or external irreversibility Q zero and internal irreversibility I zero. In that particular case, entropy is coming under a conservable quantity. That is a special case. You cannot compare the special case with the generalized case. It is like this. I am thermal faculty. It doesn't mean that I cannot teach the fluid mechanics. I can teach the strength of middle also. That is a special case. But you cannot compare that special case with the generalized case. Anyhow, generally entropy is not coming under conservable quantity. But for this particular case, entropy should be treated as a conservable quantity by assuming this process is completely reversible process, where external irreversibility and internal irreversibility both are zero. So anyhow, B statement is absolutely correct. Entropy of a substance is least in solid, absolutely correct, because there is a strong binding force between the solid molecules. That's why the molecules present in the solid are more orderly arranged. That's why entropy maintained by the solid is. Less entropy maintained by the solid is less compared to entropy maintained by the liquid is less compared to entropy maintained by the real gas is less compared to entropy maintained by the ideal gas. That is the order, right? Anyhow, second statement, third statement, absolutely correct. Entropy of a solid solution, solid solution is not zero at absolute zero temperature. So this is also not correct. Not correct. Answer is B and C. Look at the options A and C. It is not correct, right? B and D. It is also not correct. A B D. It is also not correct. B C D. B C D. Actually, 
B is not correct. B, C, D also not correct. No correct answer. But you have to select the answer. For that case, I am sacrificing right my knowledge. Right for that, I am selecting the. I am assuming that. As I am assuming that this third statement also correct for the sake of our options. So anyhow, you can select. You can select option four. But strictly speaking, D is not absolutely correct because Nernst is clearly telling that the third law of thermodynamics, the absolute entropy for a perfect crystal at absolute zero temperature is always zero. Right? Anyhow, it is given not zero. That's why it is not correct. Anyhow, D is not correct. But for the sake of answer, I am assuming that D is also correct. So anyhow, fourth statement can be selected. Similarly, look at the another question. What is the reasonable assumption for a flow through a turbine or compressor? For a thro flow through a turbine or compressor, generally reverse adiabatic or isentropic. Is it isentropic available? Isochoric no, isobaric no, isothermal no, adiabatic. Absolutely correct. Okay. Even if it is given isentropic, that can be selected. Similarly, look at the another question. The specific heat of an ideal gas depends on molecular weight, temperature, density, pressure. It is not depending on the temperature. It is not depending on the density. It is not depending on the pressure. It is depending on only molecular weight. It is like this. You know, Cp equal to gamma Cv. Cp equal to gamma Cv. Gamma into Cv equal to R by gamma minus one. It is equal to gamma by gamma minus one. Eight minute. You should be very careful while we are discussing with the limited space. Right, gamma by gamma minus one into R into R. According to Avogadro's law, product of molecular weight and gas constant is another constant called universal gas constant. From this gas constant equal to universal gas constant dividing by molecular weight. So it is equal to gamma by gamma minus one R U universal gas constant dividing by molecular weight. From this you can conclude that from this you can conclude that the specific heat is the function of molecular weight. Okay. Similarly, Cv also function of molecular weight. Option one is absolutely correct. Similarly, look at the another question. Select the process that occurs without change in internal energy. The process which occurs without change in internal energy. What is the change in internal energy? Du equal to mcv into dt. You know, mass never be equal to zero. For a system, mass never be equal to zero. Cv never be equal to zero. Then du is becoming zero. Only dt equal to zero. The dt zero means that process must be a constant temperature process. For a constant temperature process, dt equal to zero. Anyhow, for isothermal process, constant temperature process is also called isothermal process. For isothermal process, change in internal energy is zero. That two one point is missing for ideal gas. For ideal gas, dear friends, remember. Only for ideal gas, internal energy is the function of temperature. Whereas for real gas, internal energy is not only function of temperature, but also pressure and volume. Anyhow, second statement is absolutely correct. So completed. Now, right now, uh, metallurgy faculty, material science faculty will take the right uh, session. I think under bar asinter na nkunte na, so ne ne kada engineering materials discusses na, so from the engineering materials five questions hadi na do, very easy questions directly straightforward questions from the class. Now here arrange the materials in the increasing order of their hardness. See here it's a very simple diamond is there, diamond is the hardest and strongest material right, so 
last is diamond. So here diamond, here diamond. So a, a, either 1 or 4 is the 1. Next here, another thing, hardened steel is given, al, uh, aluminum oxide is given. Aluminum oxide is a ceramic, it is much harder than the hardened steel. So straight forward, uh, fourth one is the correct answer. Okay, fourth one is the correct answer. Okay, na? right. The next question, Schottky defect. Schottky defect is nothing but a point defect. Okay, straight forward question. So, uh, three is the correct answer for this question. Schottky defect is a point defect. It is formed by missing of pair of atoms. Next question, this is actually uh, steps of powder metallurgy process. There are basically four steps. First, we should make powders, then we should blend, then we should compact, then sintering, right? So, making powders we are doing either atomization or ball milling. So, atomization here, there, here it is there. So, one or three is the correct one. Second, blending and mixing. Third is compaction, fourth is sintering. So, here sintering is there, after that compaction is there. So, one is not correct. So, third one is the correct. Atomization, blending, compaction, sintering. So, three is the correct one. Right. Next. It's a very simple question, stress strain diagrams. Rigid and perfectly plastic material. So up to certain limit, that is up to yield strength, material is rigid, then after that material flow like a fluid. So rigid and plastic, so A is four. So out of these four options, if you see, A is four, only one option, that is the fourth option. So out of these uh, four options, the fourth one is the correct one, because rigid and plastic material, the stress strain curve is this. Once if we cross check that, Linear strain ordering, rigid and linear strain ordering, three. Then perfectly elastic, one. Then elastic and perfectly plastic. Uh, elastic and perfectly plastic, elastic and perfectly plastic, two. So, fourth is the correct one. And the last question, <coughs> what is the process called through which the pores of powder metallurgy part are filled with molten metal? It's nothing but it's a basic definition that is infiltration. The two definitions I test discussed in the class, one is infiltration, second is inf impregnation. Infiltration is nothing but fill the four uh, liquid metal into the pores. Here, fill the oil into the pores, so that the first one is the correct answer. Simple basic question. So these are the basic question directly asked in the, uh, uh, asked from the class. Now I'm going to discuss production metal cutting and sheet metal operation also. Some basic questions they asked, very easy questions they asked here. Now if you see this question, okay, Four statements are given. Out of these four statements, third statement, if you observe carefully, casting. Okay. Generally, castings have uh, higher dimensional accuracy. It's not correct. Casting has lower dimensional accuracy and the surface finish is not at all good. So this is by default, it's not uh, correct. So they're asking out which, uh, which one is true, right? So C is not correct. So ABD is the correct answer. ABD is the correct answer. Next, another question. Which of the following is true regarding the neutral point in the rolling operation? At neutral point in the rolling operation, the velocity of the workpiece is equal to the velocity of the rolls. So that fourth one is the correct answer for this question. At neutral plane, velocity of the workpiece is equal to the velocity of the rolls. Next, another question. It's a basic definition of this. Explosive forming is a high energy rate forming. So if you, if you observe carefully our options, A is true. Out of four options, third option, A is true. So straight forward, you will get the answer three. Right, stretch forming is nothing but, stretch forming is nothing but stretching the sheet material. C is three, right. And rolling is nothing but D is four. So straight forward question, answer is, for this question, answer is three. And uh, <coughs> this is uh, related to, this is uh, related to forcing operation, right. Forcing operation of a flash. Generally, flash is a extra material occupies in die surface. Die uh, extra uh, uh, material occupied in gutter, which is provided in a die. Generally, this is provided to get more accurate results and to avoid second machining operations, right? Force required to fill this material, but compressive stresses are generated. So this is not a function. So this is not a function. So fourth one is the correct answer for this question. Fourth one is the correct answer for this question. The phenomena of spring back happens in a bending operation due to the following reason. It's a very simple question. Spring back is actually occur due to elastic recovery, right? Due to the presence of elastic energy. This is the correct answer. So spring back effect, once if you bend that, once if you release that, it will regain back to its original state. That is because of elastic energy. So three is the correct answer for this question, right? And uh, metal cutting, 
some questions they asked, they are also very easy questions. Now, if you take this question, the properties of the cutting tool. The properties of the cutting tool should not have good ductility. It should be have a high hardness, high toughness, high wear resistance. So, B, C, D is the correct answer. So, the first one is the correct one, right? And the next one, following are the reasons for high specific energy requirement for grinding. So, grinding operation require high energy, high specific energy because of <coughs> negative back rake angle and also flowing of the uh, material and also sliding of the material, rubbing and sliding of the material. So, this is not correct. So, A, C, D are the correct answer for this question. 3 is the answer for this question. Next, the cutting tool, the crater wear occur generally at rake, uh, rake surfaces. So, direct straight forward question, crater wear occur at rake surfaces, straight forward question. Which of the following is true? Here, if you observe carefully, the shear angle increases with the increase of the rake angle of a tool and decrease the coefficient of friction. Yes, it is right. This is right. First statement is right. By increasing the shear angle, rake angle increases. But by increasing the shear angle, the shear cutting area decreases, so friction decreases. So the statement one is correct. So straight forward, first answer is, first one is the correct. No need to read second, third and fourth. And under, under what condition the continuous chip with build-up edge is formed? Continuous chip with build-up edge is formed generally in ductile materials. Ductile materials at low velocity or medium cutting velocity. So out of these four options, if you see the fourth option, ductile material, low or medium cutting velocity, so fourth is the correct one. Okay, no? fourth answer is the, <coughs> fourth option is the correct one for this question. And next another one, suppose in an orthogonal cutting operation, the cutting force and the trust force is, uh, are, are given, see it's a very simple straightforward question, see here it is given normal force, normal force is equal to Fc cos alpha minus Ft sin alpha, alpha is 0 given, right, n is equal to 1500 cos 0, cos 0 is 1, so 1500 is the answer, sin 0 equal to 0, so that straightforward question, so fourth is the correct one. 1500 is the correct one, so fourth option is the correct one. It's a simple basic statement. If you remember this formula, you'll get the answer, right? And the last one more question from the machining. It's a very, very simple question. Which of the, which of the following operation does not use a rotating tool? See, in a machining operation, especially facing, facing operation, the tool will not rotate. Tool will move uh, like to and fro motion. The workpiece will rotate. So two is the correct answer for this question. So these are the questions related to metal cutting, machining, metal forming and material science. Next our friend Devanand will take to discuss about heat e transfer. Good evening everyone, my name is Devanan. So today I am going to deal with the heat transfer. So the first question, consider a fully developed flow in a circular pipe of diameter. So please take care of this, diameter is 0.2 meter. <coughs> 0.2 meter. With an average velocity, the fluid flowing in a pipe with a kinematic viscosity and thermal conductivity. This is important, K is 2 watt per meter Kelvin. The heat transfer coefficient for constant heat flux and constant wall. So for constant heat flux, H is equal to 4.36 K by D. If you put K and D here, you will get 43.6. And for constant temperature, constant temperature, H is equal to 3.66 K by 
D. So H is equal to 36.6. So that is your answer. So the 43.6 and 36.6. So this is your answer. Simple. Next one. As you know, in force convection, whenever there is a force convection, you need to talk about Reynolds number. So Reynolds number and Prandtl number should be the choice. Means, <coughs> what you can write? A2. <coughs> Natural convection. Natural convection, Grashoff number and Prandtl number. <coughs> so Grashoff number and Prandtl number, B4. Combine free and force. When it is combined, all numbers are there. So C is 1. Unsteady state. Fourier number and Biot number. So D is 3. So 2, 4, 1, 3. <coughs> 2, 4, 1, 3 means this should be the answer. A2, B4, C1, D3. Simple. Basic definitions. The ratio of conduction resistance within the body to the convective resistance at the surface. It looks like a Nusselt number, but it's not Nusselt number because it is body is given. So that's why it is a Biot number. Next. In a counterflow heat exchanger, hot fluid cooled from 100 to 70 and cold fluid 25 to 55. So here, this is the very routine question. So let us say this is counter flow. This is counter flow. This is 100. This is 70. And this is 25. So this is 55. So you check. This is your 45. This is also 45. Right? So delta T1 is equal to delta T2 is equal to 45. In counter flow, when delta T1 is equal to delta T2, LMTD also same. So delta T1 is equal to delta T2, that is answer is 45. So this should be your answer. This should be your answer. <coughs> Next. Which of the following statement is true? Fins are used to enhance. Fins are used to increase the surface area. So this should be your answer. Increasing effective surface area. Next. <coughs> For an opaque body. It is clearly written it is opaque body. Opaque body means transmissivity 0. <coughs> so transmissivity 0. <coughs> so this should not be the answer. This should not be the answer. So as you know, <coughs> rho plus alpha is equal to 1 because transmissivity is not there. Alpha, rho and tau should be is equal to 1. Tau is 0. So this should be the answer. Next. <coughs> Next one. This is gate question as it is came. The temperature at the interface of the composite wall shown in the figure below. So at the interface means at the center, it is the average temperature T1 plus T2 by 2. Uh, assume steady one dimensional heat conduction equal height depth of the entire wall. Okay. So which of the following options are true? This condition is only valid when resistances are same. This condition is valid only resistances are same. Resistances 2B by K1A. This is B by K2A. So K1 is equal to twice K2. This should be your answer. So K1 is equal to twice K2. So means this should be the answer. 2 is the right answer. Next. What will be the value of shape factor for 2 infinite parallel surface separated by distance D? So these are the distance D. So let us say this is 1, this is 2. Shape factor cannot be infinity. Shape factor cannot be distance. Now there is a confusion whether we should go for 0 or 1. Please listen. What will be the value of shape factor for two infinite parallel phase? Now they did not say whether they are facing each other or facing opposite. So we are we are seeing that, we are thinking that they are facing each other. That's why the shape factor value should be 1. You can claim to 0 also. But 0 is happen when both are opposite. So in this case we are assuming both are facing each other. That's why whatever amount of radiation falling from 1 directly strike to 2. So rate answer is 1. Next, if the thermal conductivity of the insulating material K and heat transfer coefficient H, then critical radius. Everyone knows this, this formula K by H. It is not a sphere, it's a cylinder. So K by H is the right answer. Next, thermal diffusivity. Thermal diffusivity alpha is equal to K by rho C. So alpha directly proportional to K. So as you can see here, this should be the answer. <coughs> directly proportional to thermal Conductivity. Next. <coughs> Hollow cylinder has a length L, inner radius R1, outer radius, thermal conductivity, thermal resistance of the this one. So this is formula base. Most of the people, those who are preparing, they know ln R2 by R1, 2 pi KL. That should be the resistance formula. <coughs> Next. Consider the two wall. 
consider the two wall one and two both will have the same area and the same temperature top their thickness the ratio of thermal conductivity given so k1 by k2 given that is 2 l1 by l2 that is 4 then the ratio of heat transfer between two walls q1 by q2 apply fourier law q1 by q2 that is k1 delta t by l1 k2 delta t by l2 this is same this is same so this will be 2 this will be 1 by 4 so if you solve you will get 0.5 so 0.5 should be the right answer so 0.5 should be the right answer directly you apply this formula you get 0.5 next consider the following statement the heat conduction equation for medium as it is clearly visible that it is a time temperature with respect to time so it's an unsteady state problem so this should not be the answer it cannot be steady so a should not be in the option so by elimination method directly we can say b c d b c d r correct because a should not be the answer right <coughs> next the unit of thermal conductivity straightforward what is unit of thermal conductivity unit of thermal conductivity watt per <coughs> meter kelvin <coughs> okay so this is first watt per meter square kelvin something like that so unit should be watt per meter kelvin this should be your answer okay so that's it about the heat transfer subject now my colleague Mr. Dharan sir will take care of machine design. Hello everyone. So I hope uh, you have written exam well. Barasran and Gunna. So in, in today's exam, uh, we have got almost 12 questions from machine design. So which are very, very easy. Basic questions, very basic questions. Let's see the solutions for uh, uh, one question after the other. So you can see this question from um, uh, maximum, uh, that is uh, static loading condition. Maximum principal stress theory, which is nothing but Rankine theory. See, it is a direct straightforward question. We know that principal stress theory is nothing but Rankine theory. So tensile strength of a butt joint. So here he is asking us to design a butt weld. We know that butt weld is having an area of, area of weld is nothing but equal to L into thickness, length into thickness. This is what is the area of weld. Uh, he is asking us to identify the tensile strength. What is the equation for tensile strength? Tensile strength Ft is nothing but equal to material uh, strength Syt into area. So which is nothing but here material strength is given as sigma permissible strength is given as sigma into area is nothing but L into T. So the answer here is sigma into L into T where it is nothing but uh, 4. The answer here is 4. Okay. So see how simple the question is. You, if you choose the area, if you identify the area, you will get the answer. The distortion energy theory previously has asked for um, uh, on the question based on uh, maximum principal stress theory. Here it is on total distortion energy theory. We know that it is nothing but 1 Mises and Henge theory. The answer here is for this question is 4. And here he has asked um, a question again from maximum normal stress theory. So uh, here it is the question on combined bending and twisting. So according to maximum normal stress theory, the condition is sigma maximum is equal to SYT by factor of safety. See under combined bending and twisting, sigma maximum is nothing but. So 32 divided by pi d cube into m equivalent is equal to here syt is given as sigma y factor of safety is given as n 
So here you can see that uh, sigma y and n are inversely proportional and here d is having cube root. So just by looking at that you can uh, simply eliminate and then you can get the answer. See once you get the equation for d is equal to some term whole power 1 by 3 you will get. So here uh, let us choose those options which is nothing but 2 and uh, 4. But here in uh, fourth option you can see that factor of safety and sigma y both are side by side but here you can see that both are uh, um, uh, one is numerator and the one is denominator. So here you can choose the answer directly even without solving this you can find the answer here as 2. See how easy this question is. Okay, here this is one question from Bell Drive. So here we know that uh, here he is asking us to identify velocity ratio. Velocity ratio is nothing but so here d1 by d2 n2 by n1 is nothing but uh, d1 by d2. So by neglecting thickness, if at all if you are considering thickness, if at all if thickness is considered and uh, slip, slip is also considered, considering slip, so I can write this equation as d1 plus t divided by d2 plus t. This is considering thickness, considering slip, we can write this equation as 1 minus s. So where s yes is nothing but combined slip of uh, driver and follower. So here neglecting slip here or considering slip to be 0, we can choose by considering thickness the option to be d1 plus t divided by d2 plus t. So the answer here is 4. Uh, for repeated loading the alternating stress, alternating stress in the sense amplitude stress, he is asking us to identify amplitude stress. So if you observe carefully what is uh, repeated loading, generally this is what is considered to be repeated loading. So if you observe carefully, minimum stress is 0. So to identify maximum, so to identify amplitude, we can uh, uh, divide maximum divided by 2. So if you observe amplitude, your amplitude is nothing but sigma max divided by 2. So here considering repeated to be tensile in nature. If the same repeated is compressive in nature, obviously in that situation, so the same graph goes down. So in such situation, in this situation, uh, the value of amplitude is minus sigma minimum divided by 2. So here, uh, if at all, if he is considering both, uh, whoever the exam, the paper setter, so if the paper setter is thinking only of uh, uh, tensile repeated loading, he will be giving the answer as B. Suppose if the uh, paper setter was assuming both tensile and compressive, then he will give the answer as both B and C. So depending on the situation, so either they can go with answer as A or B. So which means uh, there is an ambiguity in the answer here. So let's wait and see. So what is the answer that they are going to give for this question? Okay. Moving to the next question for reversed. So completely reversed is the stress ratio is R is nothing but minimum by maximum, minimum by maximum. And we know that for reverse loading minimum and maximum both are same by magnitude. Considering same actually these two are, we know here for reverse loading the condition is maximum is equal to minus sigma minimum. Substituting the same thing you will get here as minus 1. But here as there is no option like minus 1. So considering only magnitude we can choose the answer as 3. That's it. Okay. So here theoretical stress concentration factor. So we know that theory, uh, direct straightforward question. So uh, the answer here is maximum stress to nominal stress ratio is nothing but theory, theoretical stress concentration factor. And here riveted joint, riveted joints are permanent one uh, whereas uh, keys, cotters and screw all these three are temporary. So here you can choose the answer as 3. The efficiency of circumferential, so lap joint here he is asking us to identify the efficiency of uh, 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 riveted connection here. So the efficiency here is uh, tearing efficiency, we know that the tearing efficiency is 1 minus d by p. So you can choose the answer here as p1 minus d divided by d, sorry, sorry, it is not the answer. So someone has marked the answer as uh, 1. So the answer here for this question is 4. So 1 minus d by p, here p1 minus d divided by p1 is the answer. So moving to the next question, direct straightforward question, this is unwinds relation for rivets. So what is unwinds relation? D is equal to 6 root t. So here uh, root t, root t is nothing but d by 6. So where, where was that? So that is an option 3, so again mark the answer directly as 3. So the last and final question in this uh, subject. So here you can see that he is asking us to identify strength per pitch. 
So what is the strength? He is asking us to identify tensile strength. So for solid plate, the tensile strength equation is nothing but equal to SYT into area, SYT into minimum area. So here minimum area per pitch in case of rivets, as we have discussed the same thing in class, this is nothing but here SYT is given as permissible stress is represented here by sigma. So uh, minimum area is P minus D into T. So here you can mark the answer as 1. So these are the answers for uh, the questions from machine design. I hope uh, you have marked all these answers as right. So I hope you have performed well in this examination. I wish you all the best for your uh, future result. Take care. I will continue same. Yes, now see, I am taking the question of remaining production topic that is first is metal casting. Total 5 questions are asked on metal casting. After then I will go with the welding, total 8 questions. After then advanced machining method 3 question and finally non-traditional machining method that is 3 question. The total I will cover here. And with that all, the today's the solution of total 150 question will over. Yes. Now see here this very simple numerical, the length of the mold sprue means height of sprue is given that is 45 centimeter. And the cross sectional area at the base, you can see the cross sectional area at the base is 5 centimeter square. The sprue fits horizontal runner 
leading into the mold cavity whose volume is 3000 centimeter cube. You can see the volume is given 3000 centimeter cube. Determine the time to fill the mold means we have to calculate the pouring time and in that the given the value of acceleration is 10 meter per second square. You can see all the option in centimeter then we need to convert that 1 meter is equal to 10 raised to 2 centimeter means 100 centimeter then I am writing here 10 into 1 meter is equal to 10 raised to 2 centimeter per second square I am writing. Now here the formula for pouring time is equal to volume divided by area into velocity. What is the volume here? The volume is 3000 divided by area is 5 you can see into velocity is 2 g 10 into 10 raise to 2 into the height. What the height is given here? 45. Just do the calculation after doing calculation you will get that answer is equal to 2 second. These 2 second that is option 1 is the correct answer. Now see next question. In order to generate casting with inclined with internal surface which part is typically used in casting operation for internal surface or hollow casting we need to use the core for hollow casting next consider the following parts in getting design for casting operation a pouring basin a b c d yes a pouring basin you can see what is answer of pouring basin constant pouring head that is option A 1, B strainer where the strainer is placed out of that all option you can see that the strainer is placed in the sprue that is B 3, splash core where the splash core is placed at the end of, at the end of sprue where it is written at the end of sprue, made of ceramic and placed at the end of sprue then you can see that the option of splash core the C answer is what 4. And remaining D, what is the scheme bob? It is the two. Trap placed in a horizontal gate. Where we are placing the scheme bob into the horizontal runner. We are placing here. Then 1, 3, 4, 2. Here the option is, here it is not given. But in the exam option is there. I think that option is option 2. Here the option 2 is correct. Now see next question. Consider the following defects in casting. A, B, C and D. First, pinholes. Where the pinhole you can see? The pinholes are tiny holes occurring either at or just below the casting. That is A answer is 3. Then misrun, very famous defect misrun. What is the misrun here? Metal start freezing before reaching the farthest point in the cavity. That is the metal start freezing before reaching the farthest means end point in the cavity and that is known as misrun. That is B1. C that is a cold shut. It is when we are using the two in gates, then the cold shut is going to occur. Then the answer of C is 4. And last is gas hole, entrapped spherical shaped bubbles. Answer is 3142. 3142, correct. Here the option 4 is correct. Option 4. Next question. Yes. According to Shorino's rule, what is the Shorunas rule? That is solidification time is directly proportional to mold square. Mold is what? Volume by surface area whole square. What is that option? Volume by surface area whole square. You can see that option 3. Option 3 is the correct answer. Very easy. Now here casting questions are over. Now we have to go with welding questions. 8 questions total asked in the exam. Now see the first question. Very easy. Match the following. You can see that 4 options are there. A, B, C, D. What is a shielded arc? Is the shielded arc welding is fusion welding or force welding? Shielded arc means in the shielded arc welding, the base material is melting and when the parent materials are melting, then it is known as a fusion welding. Here the parent materials are melting. Electric resistance welding. Parent materials are electric resistance welding. Parent materials are melting, hence it is a fusion. It is electric resistance welding. Next the gas welding. Parent materials are melting. Thermit, parent material. All the option is A. Hence here the correct option is option 1 is the correct option. Which of the welding process using consumable electrode in which welding method the electrode is supplying the molten metal out of that all? Submerged arc welding. Option 3 is correct. Option 3 is correct. In submerged arc welding, the electrode is supplying 
the molten metal submerged arc welding. Please guys wait. Yes, option 3 is the correct option that is the submerged arc welding, the electrode is supplying molten metal. Please wait here the pen is not writing. और कट करके पेपर ओपन करेंगे तो ये हैंग हो गया रे तू This, they don't say, cut mark. Production. Yes, now see the answer, the submerged arc welding that is option 3 is the correct, that is consumable electrode means electrode is supplying molten metal. Now see which of the falling welding process has the lowest power density, only one and one option that is option 2 is known as laser beam welding, only the laser beam welding has power density which is highest. Now see the match the pair very interesting question here, reach in knowledge. A, B, C, D options are there. What is the option one? Cathode spot from the cathode spot negatively charged electrons are emerging. Just see what is answer. The small area emitting the electrode from the cathode spot, the electrons are emitted A4. Then next is anode spot. Anode spot is electrons are absorbing. That is 4 and 2. Just see the 4, 2. Which option is there? Option A, 4, 2. Option A is there. 4 and no, not option 1, not option 1, here the A4, here this is the A4 and then C2 is there, A4, C2, only one option is there and that is option 4 is there, but still see what is the anode space, it is a gaseous region with a sharp drop in voltage and that is known as here anode space and fourth is arc column, what is that arc column? Voltage drop is not sharp in that arc column, that is 3. Then our correct answer is A4, B1, C2 and D3. How can the penetration is improved in the welding process? Only one, lower the welding speed. Option A is correct, by lowering the welding speed, the penetration, lowering the welding speed means lowering the travel speed we can get the deeper penetration. How does the strength of pillar material in bridge joint change with the increase in clearance? You can see that if the gap between the two plate is very small, then the strength is also low. But as the gap between the two plate is going to increase, the strength is also going to increase up to some limit. And after then, the strength is going to reduce. Then correct option is option 2, that is strength increases, then decreases. What is the weld bonding? This is very new concept. The weld bonding is the combination of adhesive bonding and spot welding. First apply the adhesive, then do the spot welding and that is known as weld bonding. Which of these joining processes are associated with melting of base metal? Melting of base metal. Only the thermite welding is the fusion welding here where the melting of base metal is 
they have. Now see, we have to see the question, some question of advanced machining method chapter. One big numerical also they asked on that, but just see the first theory question. Are the following manufacturing technologies from lowest to highest in terms of their production capability? Lowest to highest. Out of that all option, we can see that the transfer line has highest production. Transfer line has highest production. After transfer line, the flexible manufacturing system. After then, the flexible manufacturing cell. And finally, the NC or CNC machine has low production, right? His correct option is option two. Yeah, now see this is the numerical, very big numerical. Such type of numerical they are asking in gate exam. Just see the stepping motor has 36 step angle, one step angle, one pulse. 36 pulse is equal to one revolution of motor shaft is equal to G into one revolution of lead screw. One revolution of lead screw is pitch. Now what is the gear ratio here? You can see that the gear ratio is given 5 as to 1 gear reduction. 5 terms of the motor shaft moves each turn of the lead screw. When the motor is rotating 5 times, then the lead screw is rotating only 1 times. Then that gear ratio is 1 by 5 and the pitch is also given 5. You can see that the pitch is also given here 5. The pitch is 5. Then here I am writing pitch is 5. Then in the 36 pulse there is a 1 millimeter distance travel. Then in 1 pulse the distance travel is BLU. Hence we will get here the answer of BLU some 0 0.0277 something millimeter. Then you can see here if the table moves by 50 millimeter distance what pulses are required. Just see one when the 1 pulse is given then the movement is 0 0.0277 then x pulses are required for movement of 50 millimeter. Then do the cross multiplication 1p into 50 is equal to x pulses and divided by 0 0.0277. Yes, now you can see it here the you will not get exact 1800 answer but nearby value you will get and that final answer is option 4 that is 1800. 1800 means 1800 pulses are required. Which of the following is not a valid representation? Some different question is there, some out of syllabus question is there. And the answer of this question is option one. Octree representation is not a valid representation of solid CAD model. Yeah, now see the some question of non-traditional machining method. Total three questions are there, just see the first question. In an ultrasonic machining process, the material remold rate increases with the amplitude of vibration, increases with the frequency, where are that op uh, options, increase in the frequency and increase in the amplitude of vibration, correct option 3 is there. In an electro discharge machining process, which of the properties are desirable for dielectric fluid, not easy question, very difficult question. In some book they are mentioning that it must have high high viscosity but it must have low viscosity. Where the option B is correct given it is wrong. Option 2 is wrong, option C is wrong. Now chemically, chemical neutrality is correct option. Low cost is also means that dielectric fluid which we are using in the electric discharge machine, machining must has chemical neutrality, it must has low cost. A and D is the correct option. Yes, absence of inflaming tendency is also wrong because the kerosene we are using and that kerosene has highly inflammable still we are using and the correct dielectric fluid we can use the chemically neutral and low cost correct is option one. Consider the following energy source for different machining process. Just see the electrochemical grinding first electrochemical machining for that electrochemical machining you can see the electric current is required for electrochemical machining then option A is four this and this. Electrochemical grinding, electrochemical and mechanical is required B1, correct option is option 2. Chemical machining, corrosive agent and laser beam machining, very powerful radiation D3, very simple question. Yes, with the total questions, that is 150 questions was there and we gave the solution of all that 150 question and with this subject, Today's session is over and I hope so, you will give very good rank and all the best for that. And finally, the thank you, thank you for attending this session.